This is Amplify You, the podcast about you discovering your message and broadcasting it to the world. If you're a coach, author, or speaker, you'll want to tune in. If you're looking for the best return on your time investment to get your message out to the world in a bigger way, we're giving you full access and behind the scenes look of how we're running our podcast, how our clients have found success, and what you can do to launch your podcast today. The world needs your message. I'm Michelle Abraham, the host. Join my family as we unleash your unique genius and find the connections you need to launch your adventure today. Join us and let's get Amplified. Welcome Amplify You family, Michelle Abraham, your host here. I am bringing you an Ask the Expert interview today. I am super excited about the guests that I have brought for you today. We are connected, obviously connections are amazing. We know we were connected by a fellow podcaster, Janice Porter, so exciting. But I want to introduce you to Lisa Pizik. Lisa is a business strategist. She's a number one international best-selling author, as well as an Amazon author, number one Amazon author. She's a Thrive Global contributor, a worldwide speaker, and RN who takes your business online with excellence. So her strategies and systems help customers connect and become clients fast. So she studied under all sorts of people that you guys know, like Roger Love, Bo Eason, Brittany Bouchard, all those amazing people. Lisa is fiery. She sure is. And she's contagious. Her energy <laughs> is amazing. She's to the point. And her and her husband, Eric, so we share this in common, our Eric's also work with us. <laughs> and her team specializes in done for you services and branding, content creation, funnels, and websites. Um, their agency is called Infinite Design House. And they also offer SEO, blog, social media, and lead generation and the sales booster program. So they do all the things you don't know how to do or don't want to do you in the online space, much like what we do at Amplify You. And that's why I'm so excited to dive into this with Lisa today. So Lisa, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Oh my goodness. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored and excited to be here. Yes. So happy to have you here. So there's so many, well, also didn't mention that you're a fellow Canadian. So that's yeah. unusual for us to have a Canadian on the show, which is awesome. <laughs> so yay, Canadians. And I love that we're on the opposite sides of the country, but here we are doing very similar things for our clients. So um, guys, I really wanted Lisa to talk to you today about podcasting and, and in podcasting, um, we have a lot of things that we have to do to make our podcast work for us within our business. And um, where Lisa really specializes in is getting those things set up and running it automatically and doing the things that we that you maybe don't necessarily want to do or have the skills to do or have, you know, sticking in your own lane. So I was just interviewed on Lisa's podcast called the Lisa Pasek Show. And it was so cool because we were talking about this exact thing as well. So sticking in your lane and your brain of genius and your zone of genius. So Lisa, talk to us a little bit about what made you guys get started with the done for you stuff and how like have you seen that kind of evolve and help people uh, with where they probably are pulling out their hair and banging their heads on their computers <laughs> yes you know it all started over a craft beer after a mastermind conference debriefing my husband and i sitting side by side and literally like blank sheet of paper mapping out what was the journey that we took to get to the place that we were at and what is a typical entrepreneur small business owners online journey because there's a lot of gaps and stops and frustrations and roadblocks and you see some people master it quickly and other people it seems like they're always slogging along and we were one of those people that mastered it quickly and people went how the heck did you do that and it was a little bit of a perfect storm coming together. So my background was in nursing and I went to school to be a nurse and I, I was an ICU nurse for many years and, and always had this passion for fitness on the side. So I was working full time, teaching fitness classes, you know, jack of all trade, doing a hundred different things. And no matter where I taught a class at, no matter what gym, no matter what studio, I kept growing and growing and growing. More people just kept coming and taking classes and taking classes, more gym memberships, more memberships. And I was getting paid my little $20 an hour to come in and teach my class while the gym was making a lot of money. And my husband first said to me, hey babe, why don't you do this on your own? Why don't you have your own business? No, 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 no. I can't be an entrepreneur. I can't be a business owner. I'm blue collar. I grew up small town. 
coal mining town. You know, grandpa was a coal miner, blue collar, put your head down, do your work, don't make waves, not entrepreneurial. But it turned out that I'm actually originally from Pennsylvania. Mm. So I married a Canadian. I'm a dual citizen. But when I moved up here with my husband, people from the U.S. were saying, how do I, I want to take classes with you. I want to work out with you. I still want to do things with you. How do I do that? And I went, well, I don't know. And this was before the days of Beachbody On Demand and Peloton. And, you know, now the online fitness space is crazy and amazing. But I thought, crap, I got to do an online program. And my husband has 20 plus years in graphic design, coding websites, online stuff. So I was always really good with content and connection. And he was always really good with technology. And it was literally us grinding away coffee in the morning all the way to wine at night to figure out all the moving pieces that it takes to create something online. And we were literally... Um, sitting there and what I had started to do is shift out of out of fitness and get into coaching people online with content and it was kind of funny because I was married couple play together team player under the same roof I'm like yeah yeah I have all these clients that I'm teaching you content but then you know the technology blip comes and Eric's like yeah I have all these clients that you know I'm helping with technology but they can't quite get their content right and we like literally slow motion, like turned to each other and went, oh my God, why are we doing this separately on the side? Why don't we have a company together and do this together and bring our teams together? So it started as Eric and I. But now we have a team virtually from around the world of coders and copywriters and funnel builders and graphic designers and Facebook ad experts and, you know, all of that. But it literally started with the two of us doing it for ourselves in my business, but then being able to grow the team to be able to do it bigger. And what was happening was where the gaps were is – People were getting stuck by having to hire somebody else and hire another person and hire another person. And how do I know if I can trust that person? And they don't do a very good job. And they were spending a lot of time and money that we wanted to be that one-stop shop, that all-inclusive solution, that constant for people. Because as an entrepreneur, you're being hit with decision fatigue and making decisions left, right, and center that that you don't want to have to worry about if people have your best interest and they got you. And we wanted to be that solution. That's like, we got you stay in your lane, do your content. We'll help you with the content and we'll take care of everything else. Mm. So that's where it was birthed over a beer and a big, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I love that story because it's so true. Like, it's like so many people have, just the content, but not the tech stuff or the tech stuff they're getting figured out or they're techie, but they don't have the content. And I was the techie. I was helping people with tech stuff, but I was creating my own content. And so it's very interesting. like how I love how you guys kind of like married what you were doing as well. And it's just so happens to me that it was with your husband. And I think that's super cool. I love how you guys do a done for you service, much like we do it Amplify You the podcasting space, you guys have that same like kind of care and like attention and like, you know, the client's like best interest that's at heart. And I think that's so rare to find out there. And it's so nice to know that there's another company out there that does that as well. And I love, and I think for our listeners out there that are listening going, Oh God, that's amazing. You could do all those things in one place because I've hired, I've had to try to hire so many different people to do so many different pieces and it ends up costing you way more in your time and your energy and your effort. And you know, you might find them for cheaper, but it doesn't, it doesn't add up to the, the amount of effort and stress and everything. And then to find out they do a crap job and then you got to figure out how to do it yourself anyway. It's like, I've been down that route. <laughs> I know that story. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners do as well. And it sucks. <laughs> so how has it been like working with your husband? Tell us a little bit about like how that, how that's been as a team. Cause a lot of people go like, Oh my gosh, working with my husband would be like, it's so hard. <laughs> Not for me. Cause I do work with my husband too. So I want to hear your, how you guys make it work. Yeah. So we, we, have always had that like nerdy kind of attached at the hip just love being engaged with each other in every single thing that we do in our life but business was really interesting because in our marriage there are a lot of things that I'm really good at 
that he's not. So I do it. And there's a lot of things that he's really good at that I'm not. So he t- like, he's the cook, for example. He loves to cook. He's like at home. He put himself through college by cooking in kitchens. And he just loves, so I'm like, and I could care less to ever cook. Like I'll do it if I have to, but I wouldn't say I love it. So he does that. So I step back. In the business, we're both really good at what we do. So it was really recognizing that and not, and being able to really understand that there, that, you know, this is, this is for you. This is your specialty, but I'm also here with you. Like everything we do is a united front. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important when um, you hire, you know, a done for you service. And there are maybe 20, 10, five or 10 or, you know, 20 different people working on your project. You don't want to be that person. That's like, Oh, I have to talk to 20 different people now. Eric and I are always the constant. We are always the person that's in communication with the client. So we always have to be on the same page. Mm. And there are some times when we both come up with great ideas that will serve or, or, or ways that things should be done or where we should go next. And one of us has to be proud enough to go, you know what? We're going to go with your idea. You're right. That's the way we're going to do that. Because we're both creative and analytical and leaders and take charge. And, you know, it's not where it's like that clear path of like, oh, well, you're better at that. So you just go do that. We both always have really good things to come to the table with. So it's really important that we're not trying to one up each other and who has the better idea. It's because then the client suffers when that happens. Right. Really important that we are always on the same page first. And then we're able to meet with the client and then we're able to take that to the team. It's like parenting where it's yeah. like you can't have one parent that, that lets them, you know, bounce off the walls and eat 17, you know, bowls of ice cream and go crazy. And then you have the other parent that's like, Oh no, 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 no. Right. It, it causes, you know, the kids play on each other and it causes confusion. And well, mom, let me do that. Well, dad, let me do that. How come you won't, you have to be united. Get to be so we're united in our marriage, we're united in our parenting, and we make sure that we're super united um, in our business and we got each other's back. And that's like we're like the foundation, you know, for all of this to bring it all together. And I think the other piece too is we're really good to our team. Mm-hmm. You know, it takes a lot of people, there are a lot of moving pieces when it comes to funnels and websites and you know, memberships and all of that. People, our team has been with us for a long time Mm. and we searched really hard to find a good team and we treat them well. We pay them well. We communicate well with them. We let them have a voice and tell us if they think we should try something different or do something else. And I think that communication and respect is really, really huge. And we, we pride ourselves on treating people really well. Um, and I think that's something that, you know, we give to each other, but we also give to our team, to our clients. Mm, and that's, you know, really how you make a business work well is that just that mutual respect for team and partners and everybody and clients. And wow, that's really, that's really amazing to hear that you guys were able to do that and like make it work at home and in, this, in the home and in the boardroom. And <laughs> it's not really a boardroom, virtual boardroom, right? So for our podcast listeners out there, Lisa, I'm you, I want to, I want to take your marketing brain a little bit here. You guys are so brilliant at what you're doing. And so uh, for our podcasters that have a podcast out there, what would you suggest as some things that are like mandatory uh, marketing pieces that we should be doing to kind of get our podcast momentum going? Mm, I love it. So the production calendar is huge. Your podcast is one of your best ways to serve. So everybody always come to us when they say, I want to build a membership. And we're like, great. And then we go over what we're going to do and we talk about budget and we talk about, and they go, okay, how quickly can I make my ROI back? And I always tell people it's the wrong question. It's not the ROI. I call it the ROG, which is the return on gratitude. How much have you taught? How much have you served? How much have you given? Because there's a runway, you think about when, when, I mean, we haven't probably, none of us have been on a plane, sadly, like in the last little bit, right? But you don't just like get in the plane, strap in, and then like up in the air you go. 
there's a runway that you got to go where, you know, the pilot takes us around and we wait for our turn to take off and then we get momentum and speed and then we go. It's no different for your content when you're launching something, when you're offering something. Your podcast is your runway. So you want to be teaching and teaching and solving problems and telling good stories and putting out good education that relates to whatever it is that you're launching. Mm -hmm. If you're launching a, if you're a marriage counselor and you're, you're launching a course on how to, you know, not kill your husband in pandemic, how to not kill your Eric during pandemic, <laughs> you're going to be sharing on your podcast the common things couples fight about, uh, how to make communication better, how to set boundaries, how to ask for what you need. You're going to be sharing all of this information on your podcast leading up to the day that you're going to launch. And then when you do launch, it, it makes the most sense for the person to say yes and go deeper with you if your content served them because you've you've earned that right to sell you've you've solved problems that they go oh my god michelle helped me so much with that i can't even imagine the kind of value i'm going to get now in her membership or her course or coaching program or whatever book or whatever it is when it comes time to launch that your podcast is a beautiful way to teach people and show that you have the solutions to what they're looking for, to show that you're a human being that has <laughs> been through struggles or fights or frustration or, you know, whatever it is, or the conversations you've had with girlfriends or, you know, that part to be vulnerable and human because we want to do business with people that we trust. Yeah. And your podcast is an incredible way for people to learn about you so they can trust you. Mm -hmm. Or I always say the other way, content works both ways, or they tune in and they don't like what you have to say and they leave. That's a good thing. Because yeah. that's, they'll never be a client or they won't be a client that you want to work with. They won't be a dream client. So when you give yourself that runway you know, it makes the sales process a lot easier because that mm. podcast is already doing the work for you. Yeah. And all you're doing is getting on and doing what you love, which is sharing yeah. your stories or interviewing great people. Again, maybe you're not the expert, but you're being intentional about the people that you're bringing on mm -hmm. during that runway to solve those problems. So yeah, yeah, it's an interesting, it's so it's such an interesting um, like subject when it comes to um, do what content do we share on the podcast and are we giving away too much content and then I'm sorry I interrupted you so I'll let you finish what you're saying and then I, and then I'd love to hear what your what your take is on that yeah um you know I feel like attention is such uh attention is the most mm -hmm. important currency right now mm -hmm. and a lot of people say that oh if you have five tips just give them one that ticks me off when people do that. When people go, I have these five amazing tips, but I'm only going to tell you the first one. And if you want the other four, you got to buy my program. I'm like, that's you, right? Like, that makes me so mad. No, give them, train them and give them the best that you got at that time. Because you, it's, it's a confidence thing that you know you're good at what you do. And you know that there's no shortage of content that you can come up with. Mm -hmm. So I say give it, wow the pants off them, serve the heck out of them because they're going to remember when you went all in and you gave them that really good tip and you went really deep with them and you solved the problem mm -hmm. as opposed to being stingy and kind of sneaky and being like, oh, I'm just going to give you a taste and then if you want more, go deeper with me. I'd rather say, I'm going to train you on the best stuff I got you know, on this podcast or over the next five days or whatever it is. And then if you, that generosity goes such a long way. Yeah. Be generous. Be generous. I love that. And, you know, I think that's really important in being generous in your content. Because I always think like that also people think that people are coming for their content. It's when they are buying into a membership or a coaching program with you, or something else, it's they're buying you, not your content. So give the content away with the farm. <laughs> like give it away, give them your best stuff, like you say, because you're building that like no and trust. 
factor is your podcasting is the best way to do that. People are already coming to you, uh, you know, ready to ready to buy what you have because they know you already. So I think that's so smart. And I think uh, I love that you said that because uh, it is a question we get a lot <laughs> and we, we have the same answers. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> And it's like people have to know, I think what I hear a lot in the industry of like speakers that go on stages or um, things like that or go on webinars or on these big online summits. And if, if the audience member doesn't think that you care, they're not going to invest with you. Like there's a difference between talking at people mm -hmm. and talking to people. And I, I feel like when we give them the best of what we got and we're generous, they go, oh, she really cares. He or she really cares about mm -hmm. me. They care that I get it. Mm -hmm. They care about me belly to belly, human to human, mm -hmm. as opposed to, oh, I'm just going to give you this little taste. And then if you want more, you don't really care about me because you don't really care if I want more or not. You cared more about protecting your baby than giving it away knowing that you'll make more babies and there's more stuff that's going to be out there so be generous as long as people know that you care they'll invest with you if they think you don't care about them they're going to go to somebody else who does care mm, yeah that's so valuable and so lisa right now in the marketing space what do you think is the best like kind of offer us podcasters should be looking at creating for our audience like because i know what we're learning about our podcast audience in uh, podcast audiences in general is that the next step they want is to more of you. So what is the best platform to do that? Do we need to create a funnel? Is it a website? What, what's the, what's the next steps? Yeah, I love memberships. So mm. I've been creating in the beginning, we, you know, cause we have the capability to create courses, memberships, and group coaching programs and websites. And in the beginning we were, we were like, oh, maybe you can go direct to sale. Maybe you need a funnel. We do a funnel with everything now because it's a relationship thing. A funnel mm -hmm. builds a deeper relationship from the get go. That very first point of service, again, that's why I'm like, give it all. That very first point of service increases the lifetime value of your customer. So when you can get it right from the beginning, Somebody will stay with you over and over and over again as long as you deliver the goods. So that's why I personally love a funnel because it has a sales video. It has a thank you video. It takes them through a process. But I love memberships because if you've got dedicated podcast listeners, that means that they come back over and over and over and over and over again. And they cannot wait until your next episode drops. They cannot wait to listen to it. They're, they're already in. They're, they've already gone on their second date and their third date. Like, <laughs> they're serious. Like, they're, like, engaged to you. They're going steady. They may even be married to you. Like, they're there. They're with you. And that's why I love memberships because not only is it recurrent revenue, I remember the first time I sat in a room with Brendan Richard at his mastermind and he's a very, um, you know, personal development, high performance guy. And he said, if you don't have recurrent revenue coming into your business, I'm very sorry to tell you this, but you don't have a business. <laughs> and I was like, Whoa. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, I'm like looking around. I'm like, he's talking to me, right? Like, but I took it internally because I was like, that was me. I had, I had a couple courses and I had a couple, you know, things I was doing. So it's like, and I had a group coaching program. So on the months when those launched, they were great. But then on the months like September back to school, December Christmas time, <laughs> these, you know, big group coaching programs and big courses weren't selling. People weren't spending thousands of dollars on that. Recurrent revenue is like your salary. If you've ever worked in a job or a nine to five and you've ever been salary, you know what's there. You know what's coming in every month and you can build a lifestyle around that. So that's one of the main reasons why I love membership and it's recurrent revenue. The second reason why I like it is because there's so much flow, like a podcast, there's so much flow you can do with it. Typically a course or a group coaching program have a very clear deliverable. You know that from coming in the start of the course to the end of the course, you're going to get X, Y, and Z or the start of a group coaching program to the end of the group coaching program, 
you know the clearly defined outcome. A membership is the same, but it's almost like a flavor of the month. You can flow with what's happening in the world. You can be really creative with how you want to, how and what you want to put out. I love being creative. I love having that flow to change things up, talk about different things, bring in the recent events of the world and the trends and things. You know, courses, if you create something, especially in the technical world or this kind of world, five years from now, that might not be relevant. The way we're doing marketing and all of that now is so different. Whereas a membership, you can always be current. You can always flow with that. And I love that the freedom piece, the freedom piece. You can, one lady that we just built a membership, she wanted really high-end videos. So she booked a videographer and hair and makeup and the whole thing, changing outfits. But she literally batch content. We came up with six months worth of content for her. Mm-hmm. And it was like over like 30 or 40 videos that she filmed over three days. And that's her October, November, December, January, February, March. Wow. So she <laughs> more content. So mm-hmm. she's going to launch this in October. It's going to build and produce revenue. And she doesn't have to film any more content for it for another six months. And it can, so you can either pre-batch content, mm-hmm. so then you're free to go do what you want to do, live your life, do your thing. And you can pop in and still do live content in if you want. You can go live in a membership. You can mm-hmm. plunk live Q&A and things in there where you still have touch points with your people. So those mm-hmm. are the main reasons why I'm like, go, go with the membership. It's recurrent. Mm-hmm. It's flexible. It gives you freedom and it always grows. And then you kind of know, like if you get an average of 20 people in and one person falls off every month, you still know that salary and you know that number and you can build a marketing mm-hmm. plan. You can build a life around mm-hmm. that. And once that bad boy gets to 100, 200, 300, 400 people, that's some serious revenue coming in each month while you're just doing what you love. So it, it, I think it makes great sense for a, a podcaster that people want a long-term relationship with you. Mm. The membership is the way to go. Yeah, I love that because then you're also getting that higher touch point too. Like you're getting the next level of the touch point from the podcast where they're just listening. Now maybe they get a monthly call where they can interact with us, right? Without yeah. like a huge step to a bigger investment. I mean, we've seen podcast listeners go from like, you know, listener to $10,000 coaching program with some of our clients but it takes a lot of time. Whereas I think this is a quicker way of moving people into your role. This is what they want too. They want more of you anyways. I think this is a brilliant, brilliant idea and uh, something that I really uh, love. Is there, is, do membership sites, is it something that you are constantly marketing or do you have like an open or close um, with the membership site? Which, which works better? Yeah. So I always, I always agree in having it open 24-7. Because mm-hmm. you never know. We always think it's like the, you know, I said that one thing and that was the rigor that got, <laughs> no, that was just when they decided they were ready and you showed up consistently and put out good content, right? They made that decision. It was your combined effort of all the goodness that you've been doing that made them say that. So I believe have it open 24-7 that people can buy because you never know when that moment is going to strike for people that they're like, now is the time. Mm -hmm. But you also want to have, whether it's every month or every quarter or however often you want to have it, launch it or have it open, give bonuses, give, Mm -hmm. give, give specific. So they, anyone that joins it at any time can just get it at any time, get in, start taking away at the price. You can have it where you can give special bonuses at certain times that are launch specific or enrollment specific. Maybe it's like the first from the first to the fifth of every month is the time they can enroll and they get a uh, whatever that bonus is of the month. They get an extra program. They get a book set. Like people like the craziest things. Like they get a hug that comes to their house. You'd be surprised how many people go crazy over like a minute. <laughs> 
I have heard, yeah, I've heard the physical products are like what gets people over the edge of like investing in the membership program. Yeah. <laughs> no, so the, 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 we usually create bonuses that overcome objections. Right. So that's usually, but I'm telling the swag, people go crazy for the swag. So again, sometimes people are like, oh my God, I have to come up with like a new piece of content every month. <laughs> no, even put a bonus could be you take your top 10 podcasts that were like the best podcasts of all time and they've already been released you pull them down you put them on a, a usb drive and it's only for the people that join the membership get these podcasts mm -hmm. like this exclusive like you can take content and things that you've already done and make it vip and make it exclusive mm -hmm. right or do an exclusive q a do a 90 minute q a or people can mm -hmm. get on or have an expert come on that's why it helps to have relationships you don't have to always mm -hmm. figure it out there's so many creative things you can do but yeah people love the swag um, sometimes if I read a really <laughs> development book, just like somebody else's book, I'm like, hey, anybody joining this month, I'm going to buy this book and ship it off to you because I think you'll really love it. And it's right in line with what I'm talking about. Um, mm -hmm. people love so cool. Like, yes, yeah. book. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's so, I love, I love that uh, concept of giving a bonus, giving you something that's relatable. What are a couple of examples of like things that would overcome objections? I'd love to hear what mm -hmm. some examples might be of that. So one, we were doing a, uh, a membership for a, a holistic nutritionist mm. and we did a top 10, uh, just PDF download, top 10 spice combinations to be bland food and bloat. Is that Good okay? one. <laughs> right? Because like, everyone's like, oh my God, I have to eat healthy and the food, I can only use salt and pepper and the, I can't use butter and the food is disgusting and right like everybody always thinks that eating healthy and eating whole food boring right <laughs> boring bland. so that was one of them um we did one for a she was an ex basketball ex pro basketball player that got into mindset coaching and fitness coaching and in pandemic time we launched we still launched because i was like the world still needs your message we did a top five um functional moves you can do at home with no equipment so no equipment, small, small space, using like your stairs, your desk, like a chair, something that you could do. Um, people say, oh, you know, I have to have a lot of space if I'm going to do this workout thing. I have, to, I have to go buy a lot of equipment and all this expensive stuff, um, so something like that. Um, that's one that busts objections. So whatever people go, oh, I have to do X, Y, and Z, or oh, that's going to be this. You want to create something around that that answers that question. Um, I had a like a time management planner. I know it doesn't sound sexy. I think we changed to call it an empowerment planner to make it sound a little more sexy than time management planner. But I was like, if I'm going to ask you to shoot some videos and get better with your content, you got to make the time to practice and to do it. So mine was like just a little audit of your day and like, what do you need? What can you delegate? What can you stop doing? What do you need to do all around better prioritization and time management? Um, you know, things like that, your miracle morning, right? Like all those kinds of things are really good objections, um, you know, for people that, that will make them go, ah, oh, okay. Mm, I love that. Those are great ideas. Good ones. Yeah, those are some really good ideas. You can get really creative with those too. And I bet making the bonuses is fun. And then would you put the bonuses like also then into the membership site for everybody else too? or? Yeah. yeah, that's always then just like a nice, because the thing with memberships that um, a lot of people will say that it gets a bad rap is, oh, people only stay for, you know, 90 days or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the average fall off is after 90 days. Well, then you build something in. You say, hey, if you, you know, you're coming up on your ninth day mark, so glad you're here. Congratulations. I want to send you something for staying on for another month with me. You can build in mm -hmm. That or you could be like, hey, these were launch specific bonuses that only these people got because you're still here. Here you go, you get it too as a mm -hmm. thank you for still being here and staying with me. 
um, those kinds of things. Oh my gosh, good ideas. It's got my wheels turning. I know we're thinking about creating a membership site with my podcast coach.com. So this has been really great. And I know, the, oh my gosh, the value in reoccurring revenue in our own business, our done for you services are a reoccurring revenue. And it, we didn't hit six figures until we did that. So, and that was predictable because I remember looking at, you know, the, the services of our launching services and going, okay, I started zero at the beginning of every month. I can't feed my family on starting from zero every month. So, you know, that was something that's scary. And I was like, holy smokes. But it wasn't until we turned and looked at that reoccurring model that holy smokes like not only is it more beneficial for our clients too but also for our family and our and our finances as well yeah absolutely because I remember when I wasn't in that recurrent revenue um it was like scarcity like I would have money in the bank and I'd be like oh we can't spend it oh no 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 like we have this is what we have and like oh maybe I can take like five hundred dollars of that but I have that scarcity mindset repels, we know this, repels all the goodness coming our way as opposed to, yeah, okay, this is coming in next month and the next month and the next month and the next month. You can plan, you can breathe, nice. you can sleep at night. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so beneficial. So guys, if you're looking at creating a membership site, reach out to Lisa. She's such a wealth of knowledge, as you can see here. She's got so much to give. It's so amazing. So Lisa, before we let you go, I'd love to just, you know, touch again, um, make sure our audience knows how can they reach out to you? What's the best way of connecting with you uh, before we go? Yeah, so my website is www.lisapizik.com. You can see all the stuff we do. There's custom proposal there that you can fill out a form um, to let us know kind of what you want to build, what you're up to, what you're doing. I've got a podcast, Lisa Pizik mm -hmm. Show. My Instagram is Lisa Pizik. Uh, my Facebook is Lisa Pizik Strategist. So I believe I am the only Lisa Pizik in the world. So <laughs> if you search for me, you will find it. And yes, please reach out. We love, now is the time. There's no yes. more waiting. There's no more, you know, I'll get it right when, I'll be happy when, I gotta go figure this out. No, now is the time to stay here. Absolutely. Yourself. Get out there and go. And can you imagine how much more relaxed you would have been when COVID hit if you knew you had a reoccurring revenue coming in? Like, wow, like just like, holy, take that stress off of yourself and get something set up because I don't think there's any better time, as Lisa said, than now. And I was just interviewed on Lisa's show, so I will share with you guys um, that interview as soon as it comes live and make sure you check out her show. So like she says, she gives and gives and gives. Her content there is like A plus, like so much good content over there, you guys and uh, I you know I've picked up so many great nuggets from her show so make sure you guys check it out and thank you Lisa again so much for being here with us today and sharing your time with us on Amplify You. Thank you so much. Awesome all right guys until next time go out there be great and do what you love and I can't wait to see you again next week until then uh, reach out if you have any questions and I can't wait to see you again next week take care.